Hey everybody, welcome back to Chronic Woodwork. I'm Andy. Today I'm going to show you how I built this LED backlit sign for my friends over at Isotunes. Ready? Here we go. I began this build with constructing a subframe box. Uh, I spoke to the folks over at Isotunes and we came up with the design that was going to involve covering the box in reclaimed wood. Uh, I knew this was going to be a lot of weight, so I decided to make the box an inch and a half deep. And the reason for that is it's going to hang with a two by four French cleat. A two by four is actually an inch and a half wide. So that's the reason behind that dimension. I ripped all the dimensions I needed on the table saw and then went ahead and cut the two by four French cleat and cut it at a 45 degree angle. I made sure that this cleat was about 22 inches long. That way they'd be able to anchor it into two separate studs, which are typically spaced 16 inches on center, or at least they should be. As you might notice throughout the video, you'll see doubles of almost everything. This is because I'm ultimately gonna end up making two signs. For assembling the subframe box, I was planning on just using glue and brad nails, but I ended up having some reservations about it, which I kind of explain here. Okay guys, so I thought the camera was running and obviously it wasn't. So you saw me using some brad nails to attach this outer edge. Uh, that's like a one and a half inch plywood uh, edge. And the reason it's one and a half is that I'm gonna use a French cleat to hang these. Um, it's going to be quite a bit of weight, so we're going to use a French cleat that will hang like this, and the other piece will go into the wall directly, and then they'll be able to slide together and support all that weight. But because I wasn't real confident in the stability of just that plywood, some glue, and brad nails, I've attached a glue block, and that's like a half inch by half inch, just solid piece of wood, and I glued and stuck it in there, and it's really given this box, sorry for all the banging, it's really given this box a lot of rigidity. Uh, I'm gonna line the whole thing with some reclaimed lumber, uh, but it gave me the strength I really wanted. So sorry I missed that step, but I just wanted to explain it before we move on. Here we go. Before attaching any of the reclaimed wood, I wanted to attach the French cleat. That way the hardware I was using to attach it would be hidden by the reclaimed lumber. The subframe box is almost exactly two by four. So I cut the reclaimed wood in pieces that would sum up to 48 inches. I took these to the chop saw and just cut them to length. I then laid them out on the floor to ensure I liked the design. It was really that simple. For attaching the reclaimed lumber, I used liquid nail and some brad nails. If you've never used a caulking gun before, uh, you have all the tools you need right there on the gun. I applied this as evenly as possible to the subframe box and then sat the reclaimed lumber in place. Reclaimed lumber is really forgiving because there's a lot of voids and imperfections inside the wood, so I wasn't shy with how many brad nails I used when attaching this. All of the reclaimed lumber sat a little bit proud of the subframe box, and I had a couple different ideas about how to flush it up. First, I used the circular saw, and that was a fail. Then I tried to use a flush cut saw, and I broke it, so ultimately I ended up moving to a palm router with a flush trim bit. I made sure I took it outside because I knew it was going to make a huge mess. I was actually on baby duty at the time, so I made sure I set up the monitor where I could keep an eye on her, and I also set up my camera that way I could make this sweet video. As I mentioned, it was super messy, but it was also extremely effective. I should have used this from the start. I took a little bit of time to clean up that way my wife didn't get too mad at me, and then I used a square to find out how big of the trim pieces of the reclaimed lumber I needed to cut. So I took this measurement and headed up to the garage. I hope you guys like this MTV Cribs tribute. I ripped the trim pieces to size and headed back downstairs. I attached these in the exact same fashion and if any of them were too long, I just cut them at the bandsaw first to make sure they sat flush on the edges. Again, attaching with liquid nail and some brad nails. While this was curing, I moved back up to the garage and started working on the actual Isotunes logo. I was using a 1x12, I believe, to create the backboard, which I just cut to length, and then I used, I think it was a tennis ball cap cover to give me the guide for the rounded edge at each corner. I cut these at the bandsaw and then gave the entire sign a quarter inch round over at the router table. I primed the sign with some white automotive primer, sanded it, and then gave it some black gloss spray paint and then I sat this aside to dry and started working on the isotunes letters for fixing my template to the board I laid down some masking tape first and then I used spray adhesive to fix the template to the wood this is a really effective practice for both scroll saw and bandsaw work and will save you a bunch of time having to sand off spray adhesive at the end next I drilled some holes 
and made all my interior cuts. I would definitely recommend making any interior cuts first. Uh, it's gonna help the template hold on a little bit better uh, as you're working towards the outside. I made all the interior cuts on my scroll saw and then all the exterior cuts on my band saw. I was a little nervous because uh, making really long straight cuts with a scroll saw can be difficult, but I was really pleased with how this turned out. I won't show you the full process at the bandsaw because to be honest with you, it'd be pretty boring. So I kicked it into hyperdrive here uh, just so you could see it in action. As you can tell, my bandsaw is pretty old. You don't need the fanciest tools in the world to get this kind of stuff made and it's still a whole lot of fun. I will say that the larger part of the Isotunes logo was kind of difficult to cut out just because it was so long. I kept having to move my body around the length of the board. Eventually I got it done and gave all the letters a light sanding to kind of knock off any burrs or, or splinters. I took a similar approach when painting all the letters of the logo. I hit them with white automotive primer, sanded, and then color. Uh, I found a nice lime green to match the Isotunes color and just used white for the tunes obviously. Next, I made a small box that the LED lights would be fixed to that would sit behind the Isotunes logo. I quickly tacked these pieces together with glue and brad nails, but also used some pocket holes that way they would hold onto the sign uh, very firmly. I flipped over my Isotunes background board and fixed this light box uh, to the background board. Next, it was time to fix the letters to the background board of the logo. So I used wood glue for the ISO part, uh, but then for the tunes, because the letters were so small and fine, I was concerned about squeeze out. So I just used super glue because I thought I could attach them much more cleanly. For attaching the Isotunes logo to the reclaimed wood box, I used a square to make sure it was even on the background board, and then used some blue painter's tape to mark it in place. Uh, this allowed me to use a similar method where I screwed in from the back, and it worked like a charm. Next, I fixed the LED lights. They come with uh, some adhesive strip, so I used that and just a little bit of super glue to make sure they held in place, and plugged them in, and I thought it looked awesome. I attached the French cleat to some studs down in my basement just for some quality assurance, and it worked great. I had a lot of fun with this project. I hope my friends over at Isotunes like it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.